Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about hydraulic elements graph. Even though Manning's equation is found under fluid mechanics, this graph, you will find it under water resources. So specifically under the civil engineering section of FE handbook. Before we move forward with our examples, I would like to take a minute and talk a little bit more about this graph and how to use it, what is everything here on the graph, and why do we use it? Wastewater and storm runoff are commonly collected in circular pipes. In many cases, these sewers do not flow full and it is time consuming to calculate the hydraulic radii and the cross-sectional area for pipes that are partially full. This graph can be used to calculate partial flow values from full flow conditions. So what this means, if we have a pipe fully filled with water, we have QF, full flow condition, VF is the velocity, RF, hydraulic radius, AF is the area. And in many cases, in reality, we don't have pipes that are filled with water. We have pipes that have a certain depth of water in it. And this depth, it's noted as lowercase d. And then this pipe has a certain diameter noted as capital D. So based on if D over capital D, which we have here on the left side on the graph, we can calculate values such as velocity, flow, partial flow, partial velocity. So here on the graph, Q is noted as partial flow, V is the partial velocity, R is the partial hydraulic radius, and A is the partial area. And you can see how, imagine you have to calculate the area for this shape, you can see how it can be time consuming. So if I was to calculate the area for this shape, you can see how this, it's gonna take us a while to do it. And then another thing is hydraulic radius, right? For this shape, we have area over wetted perimeter. So wetted perimeter is this over here. So really it's gonna take you a while to figure that out. So that's why they came up with this hydraulic elements graph to make it a little bit easier to calculate all of these values from full flow conditions, which we already know how to calculate and it's easier to calculate. And the way it's done, I'm gonna give you a quick example. Imagine if the problem gives you the depth of flow, let's say, you know, D, let's say, I'm gonna say this is, the diameter is one meter. And let's say this is 0 0.4. If we were to calculate this, 0 0.4 over one meter gives you this fraction as 0 0.4. And you can go here on the graph and you find 0 0.4, the ratio of depth to diameter is 0 0.4. And based on this, you go here on the graph and you can find the value for the discharge or the discharge curve. Actually, let me stop here a little bit and talk about something else. You notice how we have continuous lines, we have dashed lines, we also have dashed dotted lines. And we have a, some explanations here on what they mean. Continuous lines is for NF variable with depth. And we know N is the Manning's constant and F is the darcy weisbeck friction factor. So when N and F are variable with depth, we're gonna read the continuous lines the continuous curve or the value for the continuous curve. And this might be given to you in the problem. When we have constant N and F, we are going to read the values from the dashed lines. And when they're independent, we're going to use the dashed dotted line. So here, going back to our example, if you have the ratio as 0 0.4, let's assume constant n and f, you go here and you read the value for the discharge and then go down 
let's say we give them a discharge. You go down here and you find yourself between 0, 0.3 and 0, 0.4. And you roughly, this is middle is 0, 0.35. You say 0, 0.34. Let's just assume that this is 0, 0.34. So that means if you are on the discharge curve, that means that your Q over QF equals to 0. 34. We know the QF, right? The discharge for a full flow condition. From here, you can calculate Q. So Q is going to be equal to 0. 0.34 multiplied by QF. And the same thing you do, let's say, if the problem is asking you to calculate the hydraulic radius, right? You take this ratio and you go to, let's say, hydraulic radius curve and 0 0.4, whatever, it intersects the hydraulic radius curve. You go down here, and this is going to be the value for this ratio. And the same thing, you can do this the other way around. If you're given this ratio, you can go back here and discover the ratio of depth to diameter. So this being said, let's go ahead now and work on a few examples. A circular sewer, when flowing full, flows at the flow rate of 10 meter cubes per second and a velocity of 6 meters per second. What is the velocity when the flow is 6 meter cubes per second? So let's go here. When the pipe is filled with water, right, we have QF equal to 10 meter cube per second, and we have VF equal to six meters per second. So we have the, the flow and we have the velocity, six meters per second. And the problem says, what is the velocity when Q equals to six meter cubes per second? So this means that when you have a pipe with a certain depth of flow, we know that Q is equal to six meter cubes per second. And we are asked to calculate what is the velocity in this case. So we have to calculate V. I'll go to the FE handbook on this graph, hydraulic elements graph. So this, here it is. Let's do this again. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger be able to read the values better. So imagine we we know QF, we have to calculate velocity V. We know QF, we know Q, we have to calculate V. So because we know these two values, I'm gonna go ahead and calculate this ratio. So I'll do Q over QF is equal to six meter cube per second over 10 meter cube per second. And this gives me a ratio of 0 0.6. Now let's go back here. So this gives me 0 0.6. So I'm at this point. Now at this point, I'm gonna go up on this graph and I'm going to read the values for Q because this ratio is from Q over QF. I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to consider the NNF constant because I'm not told anything about them. So I'm going to consider them constant, which means I'm going to read the dashed line value or the values from the dashed line. So let's see. I'm going to go up here, 0 0.6. The discharge is this line over here. Be careful when you read these values. And I land somewhere here on the discharge curve. And now I'm going to go horizontally, right, all the way here. So this I'm going to consider somewhere in the middle, like exactly in the middle, which means that this ratio, D over diameter, is equal to 0 
Perfect. So let me write down here. I just found that D over diameter, depth of flow over diameter gives me is equal to 0 0.55. And this is very important to know because now that I know this ratio, I can go from here and I can find other values. I can find hydraulic radius. I can find velocity. And this is what I'm going to do because we need velocity. So moving forward, let me change this. I'm going to move farther to find the velocity. And again, just to make sure you guys be careful when you read these curves, I am reading the dashed line curve. And the velocity is this one over here. So if I'm going here somewhere in the middle, I'm going to land on this curve somewhere here. And then going lower, let's consider here. I'm in between these two guys because it seems like I'm right in the middle. So I found right now that the, from the velocity curve, now I can say that V over VF is equal to, so this is V, V over VF, I just found that is 1.05. So let me write this down, V over VF is equal to 1.05. And the problem is asking us to calculate V. So from here, we can calculate V as, this is F, as 1.05 multiplied by VF. And we have VF, so V is going to be equal to 1.05 multiplied by 6 meters per second. And this gives us a value of 6.3 meters per second. And just like that, by reading the element graph, hydraulic element graph, we were able to calculate the partial flow velocity or the partial velocity for a flow of six meter cubes per second just by using the graph. And so it seems that the correct answer is C, 6.3 meters per second for a flow of six meter cubes per second. The correct answer is C. Let's go ahead and solve our next problem. What is the full flow depth? So this problem is connected to the previous problem. What is the full flow depth? If the depth of flow when Q equals to six meter cube per second is 80 centimeters. So read carefully this problem. We are asked what is the full flow depth? If the depth of flow when Q is six, so on, so on is 80 centimeters. So if I was to draw my pipe again, we are given the depth of flow and we know the depth of flow, remember is the depth of flow in the pipe. It's the lowercase d. So the lowercase d were given as 80 centimeters. And we know that Q for this depth of flow is six meter cubes per second. And we are asked to calculate eventually full flow depth, which is equivalent to the diameter of this pipe. So we have to calculate the diameter of the pipe. Now, remember I was just saying that this problem is actually connected to the previous problem, which means that we have the partial discharge and we also have the full discharge from previous problem, which was 10 meter cubes per second. And remember previously we did where we found that Q over QF was equal to 0 0.6. And from here, if you remember going back on the graph, since this was 0 0.6, we found that D over D was equal to 0 0.55.
So that means that D over diameter we found is 0 0.55. And now from this formula or from this equality, we can find diameter as equal to D depth of flow divided by 0 0.55. And this means, let's just substitute, we have 80 centimeters divided by 0 0.55. And this gives me 145.45. And these are centimeters. The answers are given in meters, which means I have to divide by 100. And when I divide by 100, I get that D is equal to 1.45 meters. So based on this, the correct answer is D, 1.45. I hope this gives you a little bit of clarity how can you, you can use the hydraulic elements graph for circular sewers to find out the partial flow values for, from full flow conditions. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, I'm gonna see you next week.